This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Building my first AMD system after five years was refreshing, and having first-hand experience with how the new Crimson drivers behave, how the FX processor stacks up in 2016, and you know, with the AM4 socket incoming and Zen later this year, building this type of Octa-RED system brings a good point of reference for comparison on AMD's future hardware. So in this video, we overclock the processor, update to the latest 16.1 Crimson Edition drivers, and see if we can get extra performance squeezed out out of the system for gaming and as promised i wanted to see how this eight core chip would perform for video rendering now i must say there were weird things happening with the system in the beginning first i got really low score in cinebench r15 at 4.4 gigahertz which was caused by the cpu underclocking itself to 4 gigahertz which is weird but after tinkering with the bios to make sure that the cpu was at a constant overclock which i was able to hit to 4.7 gigahertz so my cinebench scores had improved by close to 150 points i did overclock the 380 cards a little bit as well hitting 1100 megahertz on the core and 1600 megahertz on the memory and now with this overclocked machine i went to play battlefield 4 battlefront and crisis 3 from which you can see my overclocking efforts have played out well with more than 10 percent performance increase on all three games compared to my previous stock results and with regards to video rendering, this 8-core is really not the best for that, rendering out a 5-minute 4K project in just over 12 minutes, while my Skylake system renders it out in just under 8 minutes, and surprisingly my editing notebook with a 4720HQ at 3.5GHz renders the video faster than this 8-core FX8370. So the processor is showing signs of aging, it is 3-year-old architecture after all, so what do we take away from this. So in my opinion, enjoyable gaming doesn't come through only maxing out your graphics settings uh, because as you saw with our Crossfire configuration, it is still quite challenging to drive uh, the best uh, graphic settings even at 1080p. So in my opinion, you could lower some of those settings to very high or just high and get much better frame rate results, averaging out at 120 FPS easily. As an overall experience, I'm glad that we went with the Octa-RED machine, but if I was to do it differently, I would choose a single card configuration versus Crossfire, just because the nature of dual graphics cards, whether it be AMD or Nvidia, always introduces some guaranteed poor scaling in games and so you kind of suffer in performance. And while Crimson Edition software solves for multiple of issues that users were having in the past with Crossfire, it's still not perfect. So there's some still little slight hiccups here and there, like I would restart the system just to, because I was overclocking the processor and all of a sudden my crossfire would be disabled without me knowing it until I jump into the game and see that my frame rate is not where it should be. Um, I encountered more crashes with crossfire than when I took one of the cards out and also you have to consider the ULPS or so ultra low power state for the second GPU which basically turns off the second GPU when it's not in use to save power but I noticed it's not always perfect and it would still be off when jumping into one of the games and requires a whole restart cycle for it to work properly. And lastly, if you take pricing into account, our dual 380Xs approach the $500 price point without discounts. And with the recent uh, price drops of the R9 Nano to $499, you would get almost double the performance of the dual 380Xs cards within that similar price range, but off a single GPU. And so that is it for the Octa-RED system. Thank you for tuning in for part two. Part one is linked in the description if you want more details. I'm Dimitri with Hyra Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.